Cellular networks should be simple and open for innovation. Application developers and network operators now have access to all the mobile network protocol stacks as software running on standard Linux-based hardware. This opens up new services and application deployment strategies. We created the OpenBTS open source project and found and arranged networks to bring an internet vision to the cellular world. Hi, this is Mike Henriksen from O'Reilly Media. I'm here at Range Networks with Ed Kozell. Ed, how you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks, Mike. So you're the CEO of Range Networks. Yes. And so what do you see as what's happening in the market today? What's happening is an interesting conversion of, of mobile architecture from the old proprietary voice-oriented architecture to being internet-based. And of course, it sits as a pressure point between all of the innovation that's going on in the cloud, all of the innovation that's going on in the handsets, the Android world, the open world there, and then there's this very proprietary, slow-moving thing in the middle called mobile. In a wireless, mobile-first world, this pressure point has to be removed. And so with the cellular infrastructure, how do you see range networks helping the industry innovate and move forward? Well, again, if you look at cloud and you look at handsets, you see the, all the benefits and the activity of open ecosystems going on. The cloud is open, we have open stack, the handsets are open, we have Android. In the middle, historically, we've had proprietary vendor-defined mm -hmm. architectures. Range is bringing an open source uh, implementation to the marketplace, not only the software, but even open sourcing the hardware. That, we believe, will create the conditions for rapid innovation, not just from us, but from a whole set of players in the marketplace. This should give us better products, lower prices, and just much more interesting evolution of the product. And so, can you speak a little bit about one of your products and one of the things that you get behind is OpenBTS? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that open source project? OpenBTS is the, was the first and is the leading uh, open source, full stack uh, implementation of a, of a GSM base station. And that includes the, the software defined radio as well. So now you have a soft protocol stack, if you will, also a software defined radio, which means the radio is agile, it's frequency agile. And so now we can play with protocols, we can play with frequencies, and we can experiment with new concepts of, of wireless mobility, ranging from search and rescue to machine to machine uh, to uh, better, faster data services. Much like we saw the innovation and the, and the uh, good products come out of the wired internet world, we want to bring that to the wireless world. Okay, Ed, so with all these protocols and software-defined radios, is Range Networks a hardware company or a software company? Range is primarily a software company, but we work with hardware. We need hardware. That radio is the essential element of hardware necessary to, to build a, a, a mobile network. So we use uh, both commodity CPUs and a software-defined radio of our own design. And with our software on top of that, you can build your own mobile network. That's the, that, that hybrid, that essence is, is, is our core competency. And so what kinds of companies are going to want to work with this sort of software-defined radio and open BTS and, and mm -hmm. everything you have to offer? Uh, so we, we work a lot with uh, universities, typically engineering departments, computer science departments, uh, industrial labs, people who want to build a, a telematics or a machine-to-machine -machine implementation. And they want to have a full development environment, which means there's the device there's the wireless network itself. You can't experiment on AT&T's network. So if you're doing M2M -M development, you need a, a wireless network to work with, to play with. Oh. So we do that sort of thing. We work with governments, and increasingly we work with uh, service providers who want to, a, an internet-based wireless mobile network for public service. Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson. I'm at Range Networks with Bob Fultz, the VP of Products. Bob, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. In this industry, Range Networks has a bunch of products and services you offer. Right. And there are other ones out there, other software-defined radios. How do you guys compare and, and what's different between all of you? Well, I think if we look at these mobile networks today and the equipment today, uh, we do, the similarities are we do offer a box for people to build mobile networks on. Um, but what's very different is what's inside the box. So what's inside our box is an SDR that's doing just the ADD conversion. Everything else is in software. And more importantly, the software only is the same for the air interface, right, from your handset to the base station. 
Once it hits the base station, we convert everything over to VoIP immediately or IP immediately. And that's very different from what is available today with most uh, equipment vendors. It's really a radical uh, transformation of wireless communications, really simplifying it, and through software, opening up APIs and making a platform out of it. So we, we look forward to that being adopted by more and more people uh, because we know more and more applications are gonna come out of that. So you say it's gonna open up opportunities, and, and part of the open up opportunities is you have this Open BTS, that's an that, open source? That, that's right. And, you know, I mean, a specific application might be in the Internet of Things, for example. Um, one of the things that, I have, having spent a few years in IoT, that I'd like to be able to do is get more information about what's going on in the network. And right now you're very limited. Uh, the, the equipment really isn't open. It's not open source. It doesn't have a lot of APIs. So you have a limited amount of information you can get about what's going on between the device and the network. Being able to have that information would allow you to do more creative things with your application. And that's what we intend to do through our OpenBTS project. Now, would a corporation or a large entity be able to take advantage of this as well? I mean, well, I think so, and, and there's a number of different ways. For their own internal telecommunications use, you could very easily see software-defined radios installed in buildings with OpenBTS and other software taking advantage of that to provide telecommunications and data services. And in addition, the enterprises will also be more heavily investing in the Internet of Things as well. So there's a number of places where corporations are absolutely going to be able to take advantage of this. Okay, so software-defined radios, and there's a lot of protocols built all around that. Sure. So is Range Networks a software company, or are you a hardware company? Well, you know, it's, it's a little of both, right? Because you need to have a piece of hardware to run your software on. And one of the things that we found challenging when we went out and looked at SDRs was... Uh, uh, adequate performance for running a cellular network. And so we currently do our own SDR, but we also work very closely with a number of other SDR companies that are trying to come into this marketplace as well. And in fact, our open source public software is running on a number of those SDRs today. So we very much want to encourage that. We're building an ecosystem around that. Uh, ultimately, we want to be a software company. That's really our um, core competency. Um, but in the meantime, we have to provide a bridge from where we are today to where we want to go. And so today, what do you see companies doing with an SDR and, and your product? And where do you see them in three to five years from now? Well, I think there's a lot of experimentation going on right now in labs, uh, research universities, that sort of thing. Um, CMU, for example, is building an entire uh, framework around software-defined radios down in the uh, campus on Mountain View. So we see that um, just starting right now. I think three to five years from now, we're going to see SDRs everywhere. Uh, basically, everything will be software at that point, except for the conversion from analog to digital that takes place over the radio uh, interface. Excellent. This is Mike Hendrickson. I'm at Range Networks with Harvin Samra, the CTO and founder of Range Networks. Harvin, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. So you co-founded OpenBTS, and then you founded Range Networks years later. What inspired you? What got you going to do this? Um, well, when we started the OpenBTS project, we had started to get access to commoditized radio equipment. And we had had a background in, in developing GSM networks. And we just thought it'd be really cool to see if we could build a GSM base station. And, you know, there were proprietary components we needed to do the network with. And what we discovered was that there, there's cheap, off-the-shelf, internet, open source projects that we could replace the, the, the core network with. So you, you went after a closed proprietary world and built a similar protocol stack? Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, we built, you know, the lower layers of the stack are, are, are proprietary cause, and you have to follow the proprietary um, knowledge because the handsets follow that. Um, but once you get above the, hands, the, the, the first two or three layers of the stack, um, from that point on you can start replacing a lot of the proprietary stuff with open source or off-the-shelf technologies. So if you look at BTS now, where, where you've come, what would you say is the most compelling and interesting component or piece of the stack? Um, I would say it's probably 
you know, what we call layer three, where we kind of translate from GSM to SIP and from um, sort of, you know, the, uh, the standard data architecture to, to IP tunnels and those, that sort of thing, which allows a lot of flexibility and a lot of innovation. So what does that do for a developer? I mean, what, what's that going to give them? <clears throat> well, the idea is that with this network, with the way we've architected the network, the, I, the, the phone is an IP endpoint at the base station. Um, so you don't have to go through a closed proprietary network to get access to the handset. And it opens up a, a, a huge world of, of uh, opportunities and ideas to flourish. And so it's a software-defined radio, open BTS, and, and the open. So what does it mean to, be call, to call yourself a software-based product or, or service? Well, what it means is that you know, it is software. So it, it, you have a lot of flexibility with um, you can, you can architect the network into these various components and you can plug and play um, where you install them in the network. You can have them at the edge, you can have them at the core, you can plug and play other open source projects into the stack. It gives you a lot of power. So software defined, you are a software oriented company or software based company, right. but you also have hardware products. Right. Are you a software or hardware company? Uh, at our, you know, at our soul is to be a software company. Um, the, the industry hasn't quite caught up to the to the hardware that we need, so we're, we're sort of in between a software and a hardware company right now. And and if the industry caught up, what what kind of hardware would you be running on? Um, probably you know standard off the shelf commodity hardware like like Dell servers or HP servers. Um, you know there's uh, you know we hope in a couple of years radios will be commodity hardware. So there's a, there's a number of radio manufacturers that could provide us with the equipment we need. And so where do you see this whole industry moving in the next three to five years? Do you see it as a commodity play or, or, or what do you see? I do. I mean, I think this is sort of like one of the last industries that haven't figured out how to use um, open source software and commoditized hardware. You know, every, all these other industries we've seen, they've, you know, they've gotten away from proprietary designs and proprietary hardware. And I think mobile's it's going to head there sooner or later.